Okay, so I thought I would do a little update on my retouch process. It hasn't changed a whole lot, but I just think I could make the video a whole lot better just because of the way that I present and produce my videos now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've taken this from Lightroom into Photoshop. I've done the basic edits already in Lightroom. Um, tonally, it's pretty close to where I want it to be. And now I've just got to do the sort of finishing touches to make it a really polished, finished image. So I want to, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to duplicate this background layer with Command J. I'm going to do a little bit of a dodge and burn on the faces. So grab the dodge tool here with the O button. And with an exposure of four, range mid-tones, I'm going to go over the light areas of the face. Just help to shape it, just flesh it out a little bit. You don't have to be super careful. Another trick that I like to do is I like to hit the highlights of the hair just to make it shine a little bit. Any light areas of the face that you want to give depth to. So make sure you're always checking as you go along just to make sure it all looks okay, it doesn't look too unnatural. The good thing about dodging and burning this sort of photo is it was taken very, very early in the morning. I think it was probably 5 or 6 a.m. The sun wasn't even up yet, so as you can see, there's a little bit of grain in the image. This helps to smooth that out. The benefit of the grain, though, is you can't see too many details in the face. There's not too many spots or imperfections that I can see straight away, which is why that I didn't start this with a spot heel, but yeah, it's looking pretty good. I might do, I might just clean up a few of the spots a little bit later, but now what I'm, gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the opposite of the dodge. I'm gonna click the burn tool, which is hidden underneath the dodge here. Gonna go back to about 4%, again on the mid-tones, and we're gonna go through and do the opposite. So all the, all the dark areas of the face, the bits that we want to the bits behind the light areas that we want to emphasize, we're gonna, we're gonna paint over them, darken them up a little bit, just to, yeah, just to help give the, the faces some shape, some character. Okay, so dodge and burn is done. It's really, really easy. It's one of the most important things about my retouch. It just takes a little time. So if you can be patient, it's gonna really, really enhance the level of your photos. Make those skin tones pop, make your lighting look extra accentuated and really give you something special. So the next thing I would probably do is, I did see a couple of little spots. These guys actually have very clear skin as well. As, uh, as some of the other videos that I've done, but I just want to go through with the spot healing brush, which is J on the cheek keyboard shortcut, and just I want to smooth out a couple of these little spots that I can see. But again, shooting at um, shooting at a high ISO, this was probably 3200, 5000 maybe. It was really dark at the time. Um, shooting at a high ISO actually does help to hide some of the blemishes. So that's one, it's a bit of a loss of detail, but it's one advantage of shooting at a high ISO. Cool, that's pretty much it, I think. Okay, next thing I would do is, you might be able to see some of these little rain droplets floating around at the top here. I actually think they're really cool. So what I'm gonna do is use this, the clone stamp and I'm gonna copy and paste a few of them around just to make it look like it's raining a little bit more because I actually think that's quite cool. So using, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut S to get the clone stamp tool 
and I'm going to put the opacity right up, but make sure the brush is very soft. I'm going to take a little sample of this little range up here, and I'm going to click a few more of them around. Sample it again, and click it in. Sample it again, and click one in. And I want to make sure that I'm doing it I want to make sure that I'm doing it with different size raindrops as well. A little bit of variety to mix it up. Cool, that just adds a little bit of sparkle. Should have probably done that in a new layer just in case, but I'm actually pretty confident with my edits at this stage, so I don't even waste time doing that. Okay, so the next thing that stands out to me is it's a little light, particularly on this side around the outside. I want to do a bit of a vignette, darken up the, the sides a little bit to draw the eyes into the subjects, and the way that I would do this would be... There's actually a lot of ways that you can do it and I tend to change my mind all the time but the one that I like at the moment is just to simply grab, grab the dodge tool again. Mid-tone selected, you can keep it at 4% and we're going to duplicate this top layer just in case. Command J and then you're just going to brush in gently around the sides. The reason that I am using the dodge tool for this is that I find with the brush tool, particularly on a lighter background. It probably doesn't matter if it's textured, but if it's lighter and it's kind of clean, it um, it doesn't look as smooth. So I just find the dodge tool is a little bit more gradual. And if you hit protect tones, it doesn't it doesn't damage the, um, the colors too much. So I'm probably gonna go for the shadows as well. And just do a little quick dodge here too. And if you go too hard, don't worry, you can just back down the, um, back down the layer opacity. And let's just do some highlights for good measure. Cool, and I definitely think I did go a bit too hard, but I can just back this off a little here. And yeah, if you weren't looking at the before and after, you probably wouldn't even notice, but it just like keeps the attention of the photo here. And doesn't draw the eye out to the sides here. Cool, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm actually going to flatten the top two layers. I might bring that down a little bit more. But I'm going to flatten the top two layers just because I like to keep it nice and neat. I'm pretty confident with my edits. If you're not sure and you think you might want to go back, keep them all there and you can just keep copying, making a copy and editing the top one. Um, but I'm just going to flatten them to keep it neat. Command Shift E. Duplicate that, just in case, and we're going to do some sharpening. So I've been through this a couple of times before on my channel, but my preferred method of sharpening is the high pass filter. We're going to go other, high pass, and let's go for a very small radius, somewhere around three or four pixels. Now on this top layer, you need to change the blend mode to soft light. That's going to make for a very sharp image, very, very sharp image, too sharp in fact. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Option, click on this layer mask icon, create a layer mask that's going to be filled in with black. And now all the bits that I'm going to sharpen, I'm going to grab the brush tool, opacity on 100, and I'm going to brush in the bits that I want to be sharp. So the eyes are important, any sort of hair, oops. So with the brush tool, 100% opacity, make sure you have the white color selected as the foreground color. You're gonna brush in any bits that you want sharpened. The eyes are always very important. The Any bits that have hair or texture, any sort of logos or sharp contrasts, that's always really useful to do as well. So 
this method of sharpening takes advantage of what I like to call relative sharpness and that's because the sharp bits look really sharp because the soft bits are still soft. So as you can, you might be able to see from the layer mask here, only the bits that are white, only the bits that I've colored in are actually sharpened. If you zoom in it becomes especially apparent. Just the details, the eyes, the facial hair, the hair, the logos and just the bits that you need sharpened. So the other bits still stay soft and in comparison the sharp bits look much, much sharper. So that's just about it for my band promo retouch. There's not too many intricate or delicate steps, particularly because the faces are so far apart because it's not a close up of someone's head. I'm not, I don't do anything too intensive on the skin retouching. A couple of spot removal brush strokes and a lot of dodging and burning really gives the shape face and takes away any distractions. I um, added a bit more of the rain in this one and I did a bit of a vignette as well, finished with some sharpening, and now I'm really happy with the final result. Let's do a before and after. Subtle, but the end result is a lot more polished. Just to show you the comparison of the, the final version, the fully retouched version from straight out of camera, here's the finished product. And this is what it looks like. This is what the raw file looks like straight out of the camera. So again, nothing too hectic, nothing too intensive. Just really bring out the tones, bring out what's there in the image. I haven't changed it. I haven't added or subtracted anything really. Just clean it up, make a nice, polished, clean final result. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.